Um, what's up, everybody? This is Brandon with Strict Vision Athletics here with Coach Andrea. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing amazing. Thank you so much for coming on. I'm very happy to be here. Heck yeah. So before we kind of dive into the details of, you know, yoga and everything that you and I want to accomplish, I want to know a little bit about you. What What is it that you do? What has your background been? And where do you see your future? Okay. Yeah. So I am currently teaching yoga and I also do nutritional coaching and I am a business analyst, which is a little bit different. Um, my background is, I think, common to a lot of people. When I went through pregnancy, I gained weight. Mm -hmm. After pregnancy, it didn't go away with the yeah. baby. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like, oh, wait, that wasn't the baby. So I spent the last 18 years going through the cycle of behavior change mm -hmm. and got my nutrition degree after finding a passion for that. Yeah, And that helped kind of really get me deeper into health modifications and then I found yoga yeah and that started becoming the mind body spiritual life transformation and for those of you who don't know which no one does Andrea has taught me yoga you've been the instructor there how long now at, at yoga spot since August. Since August. Okay. I've been going to Yoga Spot for about three years now, give or take. Um, yeah, I know. Isn't that weird? <laughs> it's so weird to think how time flies. But yeah, in in that in that time, I've had several instructors and everything, and I just I really love the way you do it. I love the way you teach flow, and that's a big reason why I wanted to you know bring you on here and talk about that side of things. I feel like my background a little bit aside from the strength side, going back further was gymnastics. That was the very first competitive thing I ever did as a kid. And so flexibility for me was really early on reinforced. Just understanding that in order to be strong, you also have to be flexible. And one does, without one, you will be limited in the other. Mm -hmm. And that's initially what got me into yoga. Frankly, I was coming off of an injury. I had a back injury from a powerlifting incident. And after that, I kind of just knew that I need to be taking steps preemptively before injury occurs to protect myself. And that's what got me into yoga. But shortly thereafter, I found that, you know, the, the full experience of yoga is not just limited to the physical and that there's so much more to the practice. And that if you, if you open yourself to it, oftentimes it provides a, a very rewarding experience. And for someone like me who, you know, brought up in a very pragmatic Christian environment, you know, going to a yoga class was, especially in its early stages for me, purely a physical activity. I went there purely for the, you know, loss of toxins through the sweat, through the, you know, avoidance of injury and the flexibility. But I, I do want to dive into, you know, with you, what it is that you see from teaching yoga? What 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 does the practice provide from people? What what do you see from a physical and a spiritual side of things that yoga does give people? So I think we all come for different reasons. Like I went because I wanted to have that aesthetic appeal of the yoga physique, and I stayed because of the transformation in the body and in the mind and and the peacefulness and the contentment you feel. And as I look around, the people who come and go again and again, they're all there for the same reason. They might have come for a different one, but it's always about, holy cow, at the end of this hour or hour and 20 minutes, mm -hmm. my mind is quiet. Yeah. yeah. Holy cow. <laughs> you can't, yeah. It's the only thing, I'll say one of the only things that I have found that truly does turn the volume down yes. on life and and life is full of trauma and life it's, is full of troubles noise and stories and whirling the monkey brain mm -hmm. i try to describe to people the last 20 minutes of a of a yoga flow in a hot yoga environment and when i say hot how hot does that room get i keep it between 99 and 101 uh -huh. with about 60 to 65 percent humidity yeah yeah, we took note of that too. Jake, Jake, my cousin who goes there too, he's like, yeah, she keeps it really. I'm like, yeah, dude, I like she keeps it really hot. Like, cause some of the instructors don't. Some of the instructors, they, they, and it really does affect the flow. If they're back there opening the door every 
five minutes, it kind of like, no, that's not why you're there. <laughs> that's not why you're there. And, and it's, and it, you, you can't really say anything. You can't be like, Hey, you quit opening the door, but like you kind of want to, but I, I have found that the last, you know, 20 minutes or so of the flow is really difficult to describe to an outsider. Okay. It's hard to explain the almost euphoric sense you get when it is finally done. And I also tell people it's a, it's strange in the sense that you, you I don't remember the last 20 minutes of yeah. any hot yoga flow. I never remember it. And that's why we, we try to get you totally to the physical peak about, I'd say, 70% of the way through the class. Mm -hmm. And then the rest, the last 30% is just slowing you down to the floor so that you don't have to think anymore. Mm -hmm. We want you yeah. to have nothing going on. And I try to lengthen all of those poses more because mm -hmm. that is where you truly find the integration of all of that hard work into the mind body. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I, uh, <laughs> I gotta say right around the time flow number four starts, <laughs> I mean, I'm a pretty conditioned guy. I, I train seven days a week. I don't know that there could be a flow five. Like, I, I don't know how many people, because you get to flow four, and by the end of that, man, people people will start to drop. Like, sincerely, you are pushed. Because by the time you reach that point, how long have you been in class? An hour? Yeah. Like 50 minutes, somewhere around there? You've been in that room for 50 minutes. And, and not, not, not moving. You were moving a lot. You're moving, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and everyone has this weird, myself included, before I started doing it. Everybody has a strange perception of yoga. They always picture that, you know, you're sitting on the floor, you're stretching, which is part of it. But it's, it's a very athletic and acrobatic endeavor. Yeah. And if you take it seriously, like I, I mean, I, I love watching the progression of the standing postures and the, you know, the forward folds and everything. And I, I've, there was a time when I couldn't touch my toes that yeah. baffles me now where I'm like, man, what, what was I doing for so long? How did I not, how, how did, <laughs> how did I, I lose my hamstring length? <laughs> yeah. How did I, oh man. And I have the tightest hamstrings in the world. So do I. I, there's nothing I can do. I've, I've tried everything. I've tried it. There's no, every single time I wake up, I can't touch my toes. There's no way. That's the way I'm in the morning. Yeah. And I, I do Ashtanga now, which is at 5 a.m. Mm. And so I wake up at 4 a.m. You teach it or you do I, it I'm yourself? I'm practicing. Okay. So this is something I'm actually my personal practice. And gotcha. they start you immediately. You do your chants and then we're doing sun salutations. There's mm. no like, let's ease into this. Yeah. And so we do five. Yeah, that is nice. Yes, it is. The sun salutation A, which is a sequence where you go through and you're reaching up, folding down, jumping back, doing a push up, mm -hmm. pulling through, going down dog. So that progression, you do five times. And by the third one, I can touch my toes. I think I have to say, I think I've tried maybe four different class styles at that place. And, and I've been to maybe one or two other yoga studios, but I've really stuck to just because of the convenience for me, it's five minutes from here. But I, at yoga spot, I've tried probably four different classes and I, I just, every single time I try another class, I'm always comparing it to the flow. Yeah. Always. It's I'm really like, I don't like this. This is it. why I don't like, I just, and I feel like a, lo a large part of it is because, you know, for new people, it is, do not be like discouraged or upset if it takes you like a month or more to learn how to just go in there and just like, cause you, the first like 30 days you're like looking around, you're like trying to find somebody you're like, okay, I'm going to watch him. I'm and thankfully him. you guys that come every single day or every single week, you know it. And so I don't ever feel like I have to demo it because there's so many people in the class that know it. There is a, there is a healthy balance of, um, experienced people that go in there. Yes. There really is, at least in the 715 one that I go to these days. That's yeah. a nice, how would you say sincerely, how would you say that class compares to your others? Do you have a more advanced and a more begin? Does it, is it, I guess it's just the time. It's not really. So when I take a yoga spot, I'm doing the flows mm -hmm. and it's changed every time, but the people who consistently come, I would say they're the more advanced. Yeah. The people who are new, I, I always direct them to the 80 minute because mm -hmm. it stays the same every class so they can yeah. start to learn the name of the poses, figure out where their feet are supposed to be, yeah. where their gaze is going and not have to deal with, oh, we're going to do this tricky transition today. I can't even imagine if the class switched, like switched every routinely. Time. Oh, that'd be horrible. <laughs> that'd be horrible. See, I, I mean, because I know 
I, I'm maybe it's because I'm a creature of habit, but I know that I do the best in a repetitious environment, whether that's a, you know, a structured strength program where I, I have the same workouts or the same, we'll say the same body parts on the same days, seven days a week. The yoga flow is no exception to that. I thrive knowing like, okay, you know, this is the point where I need to kind of conserve my breath. I need to, you know, there's no reason to get excited. This is not even close <laughs> to the peak. And then there's time where I'm like, all right, it's go time. This is it. Flow two, let's go. And it's, uh, I feel like we're talking a lot about the structure of this and we should elaborate on how the class goes. It's, it starts with you guys, you, you go in and you're on, you're on the floor and you do, how many poses do we do before we do the standing? So first you ground, uh -huh. in the first um, in child's pose, and then we go through a tabletop briefly, then sunbirds. Um, so you're, let's see, one, two, three, and then you're in down dog, forward folding, twisting, sure. and you're up. And, and then, then you're up, and then you get the standing poses. The um, I again the verbiage on these actual terms escapes me, but you reach up and over to the right, up and over to the left, and you've got your eagle, and you've got your awkward, and then we go mm -hmm. so down the, and the standing the awkward. That's all the core for stability and building mm -hmm. balance. It's really good for fall prevention in older yeah. populations. I oh, would absolutely. recommend it just standing on one foot. Um, and it's, then you <laughs> just like how many times people, how many you hear about people falling in the shower and all that kind of stuff. And for me, like I find that the practice creeps its way into my life in just regular, just putting your shoes on. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many people like I never sit to put my shoes on. I always stand and just put my shoes on in the air. And one time someone saw me do that, they're like, do you do that? Is that all you say? You put your shoes on? I'm like, what? And they're like, that's weird. I'm like, is it really? That's not and, weird. And, but yeah, that's what I was saying. I'm like, is it really that weird? I don't know. It's just weird to you. But doing that, I've noticed in my, both in my training and in my everyday life that yoga has very much presented from a physical and spiritual side, a very, very helpful tool through my everyday training and my everyday like not training normal day stuff mm -hmm. like putting on my shoes or bending down or if or, you walk across the floor and you trip on a dog toy and yeah. suddenly you have to catch yourself or a dog. <laughs> or a dog or if your dog's a cinder block and he decides to get up in the <laughs> night before you and go right where you're about to walk before mm -hmm. you get up to pee yes, oh, yes I can't I tell the you the number times. of times he's tripped me I'm 205 pounds and he's tripped me <laughs> off my feet he like doesn't even realize he tripped me I trip and I fall and he's just looking up like did you fall? Oh, that's that's interesting. What's that like? He is built like a sausage dog. So yeah, yeah, yeah he's seventy two pounds. Oh my gosh, he's, he's seventy two so pounds, and he and the other thing is, he's a runner. Like I can, I will run him for miles, and he will just stay right. But he's he's like he's just ready, his big giant tongue out, and he's fine. He loves it. He's obsessed with it. Every time I'm like you're gonna get sick of this, he's never gonna get sick of it. He loves it. So I love it. I yeah, I love having an athletic dog. Yeah. I can't I can't with the small dog thing. I no offense to people who have small dogs. I mean that's your that's your I just journey. like the dog that you can actually lay on and you can yeah. like play with and be <sighs> rough with and when you play tug of war, they actually give you a bicep and tricep workout. Exactly. I take him on a walk, I take him to the coffee shop or something, and my, my arm is just pumped. Oh, he, he knows. He's like, well, we're going to see a girl eventually, and your arm can't look like you own a chihuahua. So I'm going to pull you as hard as I can in preparation for that moment. So it's good. So he's helping you out. He helps me out. Oh, he does. He really does. He's so he's so handsome. I don't know how we got off on this tangent, but yeah. Shout out to Alfie. <laughs> he is a very cute dog. He's a handsome boy. Um... But so I want to, I want to talk briefly about, you know, and you and I, obviously we haven't set anything in stone, but you and I are really tossing around the idea of bringing some form of a yoga experience here. Yes. We've got, you know, space. I primarily, what I, what I think could really be a cool kind of combination is yoga and then, um, an ice plunge. Oh wow! That's I was tossing that around. Just that kinda, would be intense. Just kind of thinking like, and it would be something to where we we offer it. It wouldn't necessarily be a mandatory. No, thing. No, but, but if you have a whole group of people that are doing it, that yeah. would be a supportive environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would. It, it would be a it would be a great little experience, and a lot of people have never. Most people, I'd say, have never even tried. No. The 33 degree water and <laughs> just gone inside of it for even if we asked everybody like hey everybody here needs to make it one minute like that's a tall order for people in the beginning and then right. they'll progress like everything else but it's that's tough that that is really a mental 
like just like yoga. I find that's the other thing since I started teaching our breathing methods and teaching contrast therapy and just really yoga goes hand in hand with that. Oh, for sure. In a way that I didn't really put together until I started doing both. They're very similar. And with some of the breathing techniques that you do in yoga, you'll never see in the sequence. We do, like you had talked to me previously about box breathing. Mm -hmm. There's the opposite nostril breathing. Mm. We do the deep in, out, 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 out. Mm -hmm. And then depending on what you're doing, because I have... um, Fire breath? You ever... I haven't tried fire breath. Haven't tried fire breath? That's intense. That's like, you almost get high. You feel weird. You're yeah, like, you're, you're over oxygenating. Like, yeah, you're, you're, it's a basically a forced hyperventilation. You, you feel like you, everything's fuzzy and you kind of get those like really weird, like little stars kind of going around. And I tell everybody like, all right, you seeing some, you seeing some lights. Okay, good. It's time to get in the ice bath. Okay. And it, it, you know, none of this of course was taught to me when, when we did this with the NFL, we kind of just like, all right, fill up the tub. Okay, good. Start the timer. Get in. Yeah, like, that right was it. <laughs> yeah. Just figure it out. Stupid. Like you're, you're on your own, but there's so much more to it. And, and just like yoga, the ice bath has a physical side that has incredible benefits. I'll just say the cold, you know, you don't people at home, if you're doing this in your shower, that's still better than nothing. The cold has a physical benefit, but also a mental benefit to be like you put it, you know, gritting your teeth and just getting past it, but really enjoying the experience for what it is and treating it like treating it like something that is really going to heal you. That makes a world of difference when you start doing it that way. And when you realize that it's not just a physical thing, like, yes, I'm sore. I just went hiking. I want to take care of that. But I am, I'm going to have to do it tonight. Like if I, if I have a, what was that? (laughs) Is that outside? (laughs) It might be. Oh, I bet you it's someone's drive by birthday. I hope I hope the microphone picked that up because that was loud. I was like, was that outside? <laughs> um, what was I? What was I just saying? The breathing and getting yourself into that space where it's more than just physically healing. Yes, yes, so much so, and just like yoga, you know, getting into the mindset that doing this is going to heal me emotionally. If I have a stressful day, if I have a day where something just doesn't go right and I need to decompress in a way that I have found that, yes, exercise can do that for you. And I, that's a big part of it, too. You've got to be involved in strength training. You've got to be doing some kind of cardiovascular. But, you know, doing yoga and doing really the only two things that I can even think of are doing hot yoga and doing contrast therapy involving cold water immersion and once you have the ability to start to connect the breath to the movement in yoga Mm. you start to actually control your parasympathetic and your sympathetic responses to the fight or flight rest digest Mm -hmm. so when you start to panic because your heart is racing and you you're telling your lungs breathe faster shallower Mm -hmm. you can actually say no i'm going to inhale all the way i'm going to exhale all the way and you switch it from fight or flight back to rest, digest, and you stay calm, and then you can continue to breathe, even though it's very hard, mm-hmm. even though you're sweating bullets. Yeah. You can still keep the breath long, steady, and even, and that's when you truly have the mind-body connection. And the fact that you can do that, and that it translates to things outside of yoga and outside of the ice bath. And that's a big, big selling point for both of those services mm-hmm. is that, you know, anxiety, depression, insomnia, whatever, road rage, any, anything that happens like that today, literally today I had something happen on the road. And it, I had, I was one of those things where like, you know, I was already ticked off before I got in my car and then I got in my car and then this happened. It's always like that, right? You're already like, whatever, you're, something bugs you, you're irritated and then something else happens and then you're mad. And it's just learning that, you know, two, three years ago, I would have probably just stayed mad, sped home. Who knows what would have happened? I mean, but in the, literally this, this afternoon in the, in the car, I'm like, all right, you know what I'm going to do? I said this out loud to myself. I'm going to do some box breathing. I'm going to consciously calm myself down. And learning that you can do that is so not talked about, I feel like. Yeah. No, I think that it's missed because you can only give so much information while you're teaching. So I can say it a million times. Hey, Mm -hmm. the breath is the whole point. Like 
you need to be very connected and very focused in on your breath. Remember your breath. Keep mm -hmm. breathing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't tell them, hey, when I have a situation where I just got really mad at my son and he's being a total turd, instead of being nasty back to him, I recognize that, yes, that emotion existed in him, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to affect me. Yeah. And that, yeah. that starts to become more and more prevalent and you start to become more and more steady in your emotional responses mm -hmm. and then you get happier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Happiness mm -hmm. is a bit of a choice. Yes. It's a strange concept because I feel like we're not, that's not what's fed to us. No. We're, 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 we're fed the lie, frankly, that, you know, our emotional state is not in our control. Yeah. Go buy this to be happy. Go on this trip to be happy. You're find angry. the perfect oh, partner yeah, to find be happy. Find the person that'll make you yeah. happy. Oh, you're not happy? Well, divorce that person. Get yourself happy. Yeah. Happiness is, is, a, is a controllable state of mind mm -hmm. and is something that, again, the take a pill to get happy, the do a drug to get happy, the get drunk to get happy, that is probably... That's the, just a mute. Yeah. A band-aid. They're trying to quiet their brain down. Uh -huh. They haven't figured out a way to do it without some assistance. That's well said. That is well said. And, and I mean, you know, yoga is assistance. It Everybody. Is. That's we, why I want to outreach because I feel like when I started yoga, I was really intimidated. My whole life I have never been able to do anything flexible. Mm. I had totally tight hamstrings. I could barely even... Holla. Sit. I couldn't sit straight up with my legs out in front of me. Really? I was that bad. Whoa. So. I know people like that. I didn't really want to go to yoga for the first year I did it mm -hmm. because I was a, I was embarrassed. Yeah. And if I, I look back, if I had had help uh -huh. <laughs> during that first year, yeah. I would be a year further along on this journey. Mm -hmm. And I want to make people feel comfortable yeah. when they come and not feel like, they have to touch their toes. That isn't even the point. Totally. Like, here, I don't know if the camera can see this. So, <laughs> this pose. That one probably can. This pose is the same thing as this pose. That is the same thing as taking the leg and coming up and opening even further. Mm. All of those are the same pose, but they're different levels of accessibility. Mm -hmm. So, I actually work with MS patients mm. and i'm starting to hopefully work with um julie she does chair yoga or chair nidra and so i'm working with her i've heard of that is that for the people that are disabled so chair she works for... with stroke survivors oh so wow. they sometimes have very limited mobility yeah i can imagine and then with my friend who has multiple sclerosis that community they'll have times where nothing will work or times when their legs are a little bit better, or maybe they have mobility in the arms. Mm -hmm. And like, it depends on what's going on with their disease. Yeah. The community of colon cancer survivors is another one that I am looking into working with mm -hmm. because they're recovering from this intense bowel resection. Yeah. And you don't want to lose core strength because you're going to need it while you're recovering, but you have to be very, very gentle. Yeah. So. Yeah. Wow. That's a, <laughs> that's a pretty tall order. Those are some tough, those are some tough circumstances to try to do yoga in. But I think if you can outreach to that level of, um, wide range of people, uh -huh. then I could offer a class that says, yes, you can handstand and do pushups from there, or I can't touch my toes yet. So you can appeal to the whole range by offering modifications for things as you go through. So sure. like here's level one, two, three, four. Yeah. Where, where and are doing, you at? Yeah, and doing yoga in a way, I've, it's funny because I have clients that I do do yoga with here, in the, like on the backyard. I just do mats and I basically, I just take them through the same flow that we did. I, I, like I said, I've done it for three years. I got a yeah. decent memory. I can, I can, just, I just so kind of, yeah, I just kind of created my own little hour long flow. I'm like, yeah, we'll do this. And most people, I mean, I, I, I tell them, you know, once they're done here, I'm like, yeah, now go try this in a class setting. You're going to recognize a lot of these poses and a lot of this flow. But, but, you know, most of these people need a lot of work and adjustment. And I feel like, especially now with COVID, because you can't adjust anybody. You can't. I remember. The, I don't remember the last time anybody touched me in a yoga class. That sounded so creepy. As I was saying it out loud, <laughs> like, I was like, maybe "Don't say it that way. It. <laughs> don't say it that way." But it's out there now, and we're live, so it's fine. <laughs> But again, for those of you who don't know, a big part of yoga from instructor to 
instructee yeah. is physical adjustments. Like you're doing this wrong. Do it this way. And it changes the whole entire dynamic now that nobody can do everything because everybody thinks they're going to die. <laughs> we don't need yeah. to. But. Well, I do have a teacher who is fully vaccinated and she will do adjustments. Nice. So, and she, in between every single person, she sanitizes her hands. So, I see. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? That's even good because if they have the flu or they have, yeah, they have anything, right? They they didn't wash their bodies. I have like, look. I, I have hand sanitizer in the in the corner. <laughs> I don't believe in it. I, I I use it anyway, but I don't believe in it. I, I, I do believe that there is a healthy balance of flora on your body, and that disrupting it too often can be damaging yeah. to your skin barrier. Uh huh. And there's something to say for the immune system. Like, you ever watch The Office? Yes. Okay. It's meant to be a joke, but today everybody really should go and watch that episode where. I think it's Pam goes up and is talking about the flu season and is saying, okay, I'm going to put up hand sanitizing stations. Masks are going to be available at each one. And Dwight stands up in Dwight Trout form and says, no, no, no. If you care about your immune system, we should put desanitizing stations all throughout the office. Made of fecal matter, vomit. Pu-. And of course, everyone's like, what the... But there is some logic to that. That's obviously a joke and it's taken to the extreme. But if you are coddling your immune system for so long, I have people, I have family members that still haven't left the house today. Thankfully, they have their immune cells still from previous exposures. True. But I mean, when is the last time this was studied? When is the last time we took a group of healthy individuals? Okay. And we're going to lock you inside for two, like we're going to lock you inside for a year not two months, a year. And then we're going to let you out. Yeah, I don't know that that has been studied, but... I just don't... I, I don't I, know who would volunteer for I that. don't, again, <laughs> it's not... I'm not a doctor. I'm not saying I know this, but, but, I, but I know our immune systems work through fighting off infection and through fighting off negative germs and bacteria. You know, there are people walking around in the airport with hazmat suits on, literally, right now. You are deliberately destroying your body's opportunities to deal with that in a you know positive, healthy way. And I understand that this is a you know these are extenuating circumstances given what's happening. But I just I I I don't see the other side of this argument being represented in any mainstream media at all. I just don't see it being represented in the conversation. That okay, yeah, I hear what you're saying to me. Everybody should be wearing a mask. We should all stay home. We should all live in a bubble. Let's just say. And then there's the other side that just kind of gets muted i don't know I, I i just don't i don't necessarily believe in it to the degree that i think everyone not everyone around me because i know there's a lot of people that agree with me but a vast majority of people disagree with me and that notion i think the way that i've approached it just in light of having a 72 year old parent mm-hmm. and knowing that they're at a high risk yeah. i've been careful I don't, I don't think I've gone to the extreme of my some of my too. friends yeah. that have not left home. And I have friends that they haven't compromised immune systems. They are always staying home. So yeah. <laughs> those people, they're like, this is our heyday. Everything's online. They're offering it like through Zoom and they love it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <sighs> yeah, that's not. No, again I, I, again, I come from this from a very biased perspective. I know I'm a, you know recently 30 year old dude who doesn't want to live inside like forever it's just not i'm sorry life life is i just can't i can't do that i couldn't i couldn't do that i just yeah yeah i I, we don't need to we don't need to beat this to death in front of the entire audience but i just don't i don't see the other side being represented in this conversation enough and i know there are a lot of people that would love it if it was and I, obviously, if there are high-risk individuals, if there are elder, I have, all four of my grandparents are still alive, knock on wood. It's amazing, you know, and, and all four of them have been vaccinated. Great. That's fine. They're all in their mid-80s. They should be. That's the way yeah. this works. Yeah. But if you are trying to tell me that me, you know, exercising my right to take my own health into my own responsible, you know, mindset and go to the grocery store is un-American, unsafe, and I should be, I don't know, fined, this is, you're going to lose me. I just, I can't wrap my head around that. So, yeah, I don't know. We got on this topic for a while, but uh, let's, let's circle, let's circle back to, circle back to what we were talking about before. So with, you know, with what I'm doing here, and we didn't really get into this yet at all, um, 
you know, this is a very exclusive training facility where I do, you know, one, sometimes two people at a time, but that's really it. That's, that's kind of what's been the norm here for about six and a half years. But I would like to, to a degree, again, not, you're never going to get a, you know, 20 person thing going back there, but we could get a healthy group of people who want to learn yoga, Mm -hmm. people who want to learn the flow, people who want to do the ice bath, people who want to learn the positions and get something going back there. That would be really fun. And I think people would really, really enjoy that. I, yeah, I think they would. I agree. I think that having it be a smaller or medium sized group Mm -hmm. is better because then the teacher, if you think about having a class of 30 people, which is what would be average before COVID. What's the size of yoga spot, cl- the, the flow class? I'm wondering that too. What's now? What's the right norm? Now? Yeah, right now. So it was 20 until they removed the mask mandate, mm-hmm. and now it's 25. Yeah, I noticed that. I, those extra five people are evident in there. It is like crowd. I'm like, And that's man. even not what it used to be, because we it? used to be only a foot and a half from another mat, mm-hmm. so we could get more than 30 people in there. Yeah, we could, couldn't we? And it would make the whole room stay warm without any heat. Oh, yeah, yeah, it would. The musk. <laughs> Everybody yeah. just sweating. <laughs> I'll say this, man. If there was ever an environment... Like, I'm, I'm shocked that there are places that are closed and yoga is allowed to go. Because if there was ever a place where, like, something like that could spread, a hot yoga studio, a hot gym... A hot, I mean, it's like ground zero for germs and bacteria. Well, they do sanitize it really thoroughly. Yeah, yeah, I know they do. No, yeah, it's a yoga it's, spot. They were yoga spot's great. About it. Yeah, yoga spot's great. I'm, I'm, I, and I can guarantee you, there are gallons of <laughs> that floor sanitizer oh, in yeah. our closet. Oh, I see. I see you do cleaning it after every single time yes. anybody does anything, and it's oh, great. Oh, you touch it this? Never... I have to wipe it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Even now, people are nuts. People are. Everybody just wants everything to be absolutely clean. Which yeah. again, that's fine. But well, you know, it, it's good in a yoga studio because. Because you do want to make sure that you, even if it's not COVID times, you want to sanitize. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. People, Flu's not gone. People still get sick. People yeah. are still well, gross. There's still parasites and fungus oh, and yeah. all of the oh, fun. Dude, <laughs> when I get out of that class and I go into the parking lot, I did this the other day and I didn't realize people were watching me. It's embarrassing. <laughs> I take my mat because I don't want to put it in my car. It's like, like literally, I take because I, I don't even walk through the studio. I do everyone that I do you the service of just walking to the door. I just drop it out of the door. I'm like, uh-uh, I'm not bringing that through the studio. I'm not taking it into the bathroom, nothing. When I ring that out in the parking lot, like into the street, it straight up sounds like I'm taking this water bottle and dumping it onto the street. And I did it the other day. There was like three girls that were like right by their car. And they're like, is that sweat? I'm like, ah, yeah, yeah, sweat. She's like, that's disgusting. Like, yeah, yeah, it was. But it's okay. They were coming out of like a, that, they were coming to that, that grill or something. Oh, so yeah. they, you know. They, they don't have any right to talk then. They hadn't done. Exactly. I'm like, yeah, that's, uh, that's disgusting. But hey, I feel really good. I drink a whole 40 ounce bottle of water during the 80 minute mm-hmm. and I don't have to pee. <laughs> See, my so that thing just tells is, you it all came uh, right it out. It all comes right it's out. It's washing yeah, yeah. you from the inside out. <laughs> I have tried. I still can't make it the whole flow without having to pee. Like it's because I hyperhydrate throughout the day of yoga. I drink that black flat. It's not in here, but you remember that that black thing? I always I, I bring it into class. Yeah, I will drink four sometimes five of those in the day before yoga yeah just in preparation just knowing what's going to happen and i'm like i I try to like i try to go to the bathroom right before i go in there it doesn't matter if i go in there i still got to do it but i i I know what you mean but but when i get out and i ring that thing out it is it's crazy it's crazy how much you can physically sweat and i don't feel like i ever sweat when I was young, I uh-huh. don't remember I like being in an excessive sweater. So yeah. anybody sweats like that. <laughs> yeah. What's well, healthy? That's yeah. the other thing. It's healthy to sweat. I mean, you have good perspiration. Your yeah. body's good at thermogenesis. These are all good things. And I keep it humid so you can't actually cool yourself down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tell me about it. Yeah. We know. Oh, it's hot. It is hot and musty. It is hot and steamy in there. It, I, I found out one of the students, she named all of the teachers that keep it warm enough for her liking hotties. <laughs> <laughs> I got a good nickname. <laughs> now, I don't remember if you taught this class, but I, I was definitely there. Were you there when, um, I think it was Lainey had a seizure? Oh, I heard about no. I oh, wasn't there. man, that was scary. Yeah, Obviously, be... they stopped the whole class. Lights oh, come yeah, on. Everything's sure. done. 
I didn't think that. I mean, that's yeah. It's that was just. I just. I wanted to ask if you were there. I couldn't remember if you taught that class or not. Sometimes syncope can trigger into yeah. seizures. Well, I had epilepsy as a kid. My sister has epilepsy, so I mean, when I saw that, I was like, "Oh, she's having a seizure." It's oh, that's yeah, horrifying. My family the all has worst it. Worst <laughs> feeling in the world. Anybody who's never had that, you just don't understand. It's 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 one of the scariest experiences you'll ever go through. If you've ever had a seizure, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's like you're you can't like escape your. It's like your brain is not on the right pathway. You're like you can't think and you can't. You're like there, but you're not. I don't know how to describe it. It's very spooky. But um, no, that's really the only incident I've ever seen anything happen. Everybody just leaves there. My brother, every time I leave, my brother's like, dude, I almost lost it. I almost his problem it's also his freaking fault too because he doesn't go every week yeah. he goes every seven weeks and then he's like dude that was so hard I'm like yeah you haven't been here since July so <laughs> and that's the other great thing about doing yoga in the backyard is it's gonna be hot oh heck yeah I didn't and even I think love about that. that yes oh everybody's gonna come gonna get a tan too yeah. these are all good things even with that, yeah, that's nice. See, we'll we can we'll do, just spray them with some sunblock as they walk in. <laughs> we'll do, we'll do, what we can do is we can do a yoga flow. We can do like a yoga flow. We won't do 80 minutes. We'll have to do something. We'll have to try to conclude the whole thing in an hour. So we could do like, you know. Well, if you had something that you wanted to do every time the uh, same way, we could work to design something yeah. that would be really inclusive of every movement. Yeah, for sure. That's a good idea. Okay. No, I'll let you, I'll let, I mean, I'll throw my opinion in as, as needed, but I think I, you know, I'll let you take the reins on this. I mean, you're the, you're the instructor. I'll, I'll, I'll take well, the class. The way that I, I do my own private practice when I'm not being led by anyone is I like to start really slow, do what I call moving and stretching mm -hmm. and then push super hard, like almost power core level, get yourself sweating, get yourself out of breath, push until you fail. Mm. And then you stretch again. Love that. And then you do it again. And then you stretch again. <laughs> yeah. So though, so it'll be a, it'll be a workout. It'll yes. be a, and with the heat. I mean, my yes. goodness, we're coming into the heat. So but this going could not into the stretching when you're warm is a blessing. Mm -hmm. It's so good. Doing everything strength training or flexibility related in the heat is a blessing. Yeah. That's the other thing. If people don't like, Oh, what do you, you train in your garage? What's it like in there? I'm like, yeah, well it's hot. I mean, but yet what it's supposed to, you're supposed to train in the heat. You're not supposed to train in 72 degrees lifetime fitness gym temperature. If, if you do your jolly breathing, the sound breathing where you restrict through the back of your throat, you can get just as warm in any cold environment. Really? Yes. Cause it, tr it generates inner heat. I'm sorry, you're going to have to demonstrate that. It's uh, the Dark Vader breathing. Ooh, that's good. The Emperor has been expecting you. Exactly. That was good, right? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Okay, I'm going to remember that. And that's... that also helps you pay attention that you're fully inhaling and that yeah. you're fully emptying. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Yes. And that would come in real handy with the, uh, with the ice bath. Yes. No, I think we could do this in a really cool sort of, you know, do duo trainer way you know we could do the yoga thing and maybe like i i, I my brother wants to come on as sort of videographer slash content marketer guy for the class which is great but um i think if we design something to where people could come and do you know the yoga flow which also has like you said sort of the power core aspect to it for for a bit of a high intensity workout mm -hmm. and then end with kind of the cold plunge just sort of a contrast of that the heat sounds and the cold. amazing that sounds amazing that sounds I like know. something i would do like I mean, that sounds great right away <laughs> yeah no i th i think so i think we're on to something here and um probably following this podcast you know we'll we'll uh because it'll be a couple weeks before we'll roll this one out mm -hmm. we we'll have something together for you guys and we'll um we'll start advertising that i actually started i got your photos yeah. i started uh the marketing campaign too i started i'm gonna make a you know little yes page and whatnot well you'll see you'll see just like i did with the boot camp and everything but uh yeah this was awesome yes thank you so much for coming on oh yes thank you lots of fun me. right yes i love it it's cool it's a free-flowing conversation that's why i love podcasts and it's you know, like as you witness it's a whole thing to set it up but yes it's uh it's worth it's it intense <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is but it's worth it once it works and i think this one i think this one did really well oh thank you thank you so much andrea Thank you. Again. Guys, we'll keep you posted on the class and um, we'll let you know as we roll this out and you and I will we'll get this thing going. Meeting of minds. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Meeting of minds, meeting of talent. I love it. All right, guys, take care.
Thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode of the podcast. If you guys like our content and you want to see more of it, click the subscribe button down below. Or as always, you can follow us on any of our other social media platforms. Stay fit, you guys. Stay healthy and become the 1%.